Welcome back to OTR, the pop quiz with Congressman Seth Moulton. Question three, who did Fidel Castro overthrow in New Year's 1959, making Cuba the first communist country in the Western Hemisphere? I'll tell you what, my Cuba history is apparently terrible because <laughs> I, I don't know. Fulgencio Batista, overthrown happening as thousands of Americans were gambling in the casinos, and obviously because that's what they were doing at that time of the year in that, in that uh, decade. That, that part of the, a little before that, I was born, but, <laughs> well, but probably something I should know. That's a good point. <laughs> Despite CIA plots on his life and the Bay of Pigs, we're staying in Cuba. <laughs> Despite CIA plots on his life and the Bay of Pigs, Fidel Castro survived nine American presidents until he retired in 2008 during the George W. Bush era. Who was president when Castro actually came into power in 1959? In 1959, that would have been President Eisenhower. Dwight David Eisenhower. Fidel Castro holds a number of Guinness World Records. Believe it, he does. One is for surviving the most assassination attempts. He claims there were 638. Another took place at the UN. What did the loquacious former leader do in terms of a record at the Guinness Book of World Records? In terms of his assassination attempts? No, this is, a, this is another one of his uh, what loquacious former leader do. What did he do? He gave the longest, longest UN speak lot, speech. Yeah. Four yeah. hours and 29 minutes. He did it on September of 1960. As long as, I'm by glad the way, I missed that one. By the way, that wasn't his longest speech on record in Cuba. That was seven hours and ten minutes. Wow. I have to point Just out your one correct answer was based really on your knowledge of American history <laughs> more than it was on Cuban history. Um, speaking of Cuba, what should the U.S. be doing in the near future in regards to Cuba? Um, you know, there are going to be votes that are taking place in Congress relatively soon. Uh, what should be done and how soon should it be done? I think it's time to, to try a different strategy and I think it's time to open up. I think that if we really want to uh, reform what's going on in Cuba, the best way to do it is to have uh, personal and business relations with that country. But look, there are legitimate concerns. So full normalization? I, I, we've got to move towards full normalization. But there are legitimate concerns that should be addressed along the way. And I've heard some of these concerns from my colleagues. We've got to make sure it's a deliberate approach. That doesn't mean that just we open the doors uh, wide right away. Uh, we've got to be thoughtful. And we've got to be thoughtful about the American citizens who have concerns about what's happened in Cuba in the past and what may still be going on there today. Let's talk about a couple of things that are, that are in front of many Americans right now. And I understand the presidential race is still not for well over over a year away, but let's, let's talk about Joe Biden. Should he run for president? Well, uh, I think he'd make a great president. Uh, I think Hillary Clinton would make a great president. Uh, Vice President Biden has been a real political mentor of mine. He came up and campaigned for me and Lynn. Uh, so I have a lot of respect for him, but you know, ultimately it's his decision. But it, would it be healthy for the Democratic Party to have two strong candidates? Look, I, I got here by uh, having a primary challenge, um, by challenging a long-term incumbent. Uh, I think that that kind of competition is, is healthy for the party. Would Donald Trump make a good president? No. Emphatically, no. <laughs> Our thanks to Congressman Seth Moulton for being here, the 6th District Congressman. Thank you, sir. Great to see you as always. Thanks for Great joining us you. on the record. Thank After you. this break, our political roundtable and the growing personal animosity between Donald Trump and Jeb Bush.